Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of this brand new product from Arctic. This is the Accelero Hybrid. It is a closed loop cooler, not for CPUs, but for graphics cards. So here's a quick look at the box. As you can see, a picture of the unit itself on the front. It also comes with an Arctic F12 PWM fan. Flipping around here to the back, we can see a diagram of the product itself. So it's got a 120 millimeter radiator of course, tubes to circulate the fluid between the uh, actual water block and the radiator. And then you get a housing unit uh, with an additional fan that you actually attach to the graphics card. Over here on the left side, we have some cooling performance. And this is with a GTX 680 uh, versus the stock cooler running at uh, max load with ambient temperature. It's 69.9 degrees Celsius, Accelero Hybrid down to 44 degrees Celsius. Uh, also much lower noise output. Uh, with the Accelero Hybrid, and then you also get thermal adhesive for your GDDR5 RAM, or usually GDDR5 RAM, that will also lower the temperatures of your uh, actual memory. And of course we must check our compatibility to make sure this is going to work with your particular video card. I'm not going to read all of them off here, but uh, for the AMD Radeon side we have the HD 7870 up there at the top, and for NVIDIA side we have GTX 680, 670, as well as a lot of older cards. So here's sort of a layout of everything that comes included in the box, and I'm just sort of go, going to go over each piece one at a time. Here is the radiator that's included. It measures 25 millimeters thick. The radiator fins themselves are a little bit thinner than that. As you can see, it's got uh, tubing, and that will extend over to the water block right here, which has, which has a copper base, as well as a universal mounting solution that should fit on most of those video cards that you saw um, listed on the side of the box. On the other side of the water block, you have an Arctic cooling logo as well as a, well that's not a button, you have an Arctic cooling logo. Now you also have a four pin fan connector right there and then an actual power connector that you will plug into your power supply. Now the reason they have both of these here is because the idea is that both the fan on the radiator as well as the included fan on this uh, shroud right here will all be controlled by the video card if possible. That is, if the video card has the compatible connectors to set that up. That being said, I'm going to be pulling this out here and there, and that's just to sort of use it as, a, as an example. This, is a, this happens to be a 550 Ti uh, NVIDIA GeForce video, video card. Um, so as you can see, I've removed the stock cooling solution. Here in the center is your GPU. You also have some memory modules scattered around, and then down here at the end, you have your voltage regulation modules. And they have provided cooling solutions, uh, not just for the GPU, but also for the memory modules, as well as the voltage regulators. Also down here at the end, you'll notice there is a four pin power connector that the uh, stock fan would plug into. And that's kind of what this whole system is designed for, is these four pin power connectors. Uh, there are also three pin power connectors for video cards that are out there. If you do happen to have one of those, you can use this little adapter here. It's a Molex adapter that will allow you to provide uh, power to the, uh, well, this fan here, as well as the rest of the unit. Um, but uh, you will lose the ability to have the video card control the fans in that particular setting. Now, uh, going back over to the shroud here, as you can see, there's a space right here. And that is where the actual water block will go. As you can see, it fits on right there. Uh, now, the manual has some specific instructions for uh, routing the tubing, for instance, which goes this way, and there's a couple of different ways to route it, depending on what type of video card you have. Also, you have this little guy, um, which is that four-pin fan connector that you're going to want to plug directly into the video card. Now, depending on how your video card is laid out, uh, again, they also have specific instructions in the manual, whether you want to route this down towards this end or down towards this end, to set that up before you actually get the unit installed, because cable management for this does uh, is important and you want to take that into consideration beforehand. Also, once the water block is dropped into this unit, depending on how you have it oriented, you'll take this four pin fan connector and plug it into this connector which is right there and that sort of ties the whole thing together. Uh, and then finally at the end here you have one final four pin PWM fan connector and that is for the fan plug for your Arctic fan that's included, 120 millimeter fan, and that will sort of get all of the fans powered and uh, also, if you have it routed through your video card, the fan speed will be controlled by your video card depending on the temperatures of the card and that sort of thing. They've given you uh, a clear blank here that is the same size as the water block, and you can use that to set on top of your GPU, and that will sort of give you an idea for spacing, because one of the other features 
of this card is all of these heat sinks here. Now these are all still sort of taped over in the packaging here. I don't want to remove them all because they'll get all scattered around. But you have lots of different sizes of heat sinks here, um, and those can be attached both to the memory modules as well as the voltage regulation modules on your video card, and that will help keep those cooler. Uh, in tandem with the active fan on the shroud, we'll keep airflow moving over those. Also, I should mention that there's some Arctic M4 thermal compound that's included. You get a tube of it there. You're supposed to use the entire tube um, on either the GP GPU or the uh, water block there, and that will make sure that you have good thermal conductivity between the GPU and the water block. The rest of the hardware here is mostly accessories. You get an additional PCI bracket if necessary. Again, this is compatible with a lot of different video cards, so uh, they've included quite a few different accessories here to make sure you have maximum compatibility. These screws are just to help uh, attach the included 120 millimeter fan to the radiator. You also have some additional screws with some wide washers here, and that is to actually bolt down on this section, so when you route the tubing for the water cooling solution through there, it will help keep that locked in place. You also have some plastic spacers on there. You want to use those with this back plate. The back plate will go on the back of the video card, uh, which is right about there. And you'll notice there are some sensitive components right there. So another accessory here is this bit of foam padding. There's also some additional spacers and washers in there, but the foam padding goes directly behind your GPU. That keeps it protected, and then you put this uh, back plate on top of that to secure it down. Again, uh, there's multiple washers in here, different sizes, uh, plastic standoffs, I should say, that will keep that um, to the prop appropriate depth to make sure that when you actually secure down the water block, it makes good t contact with the GPU on that side. Uh, what am I forgetting here? You get a couple of these basic fan screws, and that's uh, simply to attach the included fan. And then finally you get this thermal glue, and that is uh, what you will use with the included uh, heat sinks for all your voltage regulators and memory modules. Uh, this is one-time use, so make sure that you have everything laid out beforehand. It uh, specifies that in the manual, because once you've opened this tube, you want to get all it, you want to get all of those uh, radiators attached to the card, set down, and then you give it a 60 minutes to actually set in. And that is again a one-time thing. You also get a zip tie here, and that's to uh, help out again with the cable management. Um, again, with the wide variety of video cards that this is actually compatible with. They've done a really good job to sort of uh, let you know, for instance, here's sort of a generic breakdown of a video card, and they've divided it into specific areas, so they've let you know, depending on where your power connector is, how to route the cable based on what area the actual power connector is in. And then they give real specific instructions here. Uh, for instance, there's some specific GTX 680 instructions for routing the tubing. And then uh, flipping over here to the back, uh, again, just the uh, specific instructions for um, setting up the water block um, applying that adhesive, uh, applying pressure, and setting up all of your, uh, all of the little radiators, uh, and, and then also, of course, attaching the back plates, uh, getting your cable management lined up properly, and then finally, they have a layout of a computer case here, and where you can position uh, the actual 120 millimeter radiator within your case to sort of give yourself the optimal airflow based on whether you want to keep your CPU cooler or keep your graphics card cooler. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Arctic Accelero Hybrid Closed Loop Liquid Cooling Solution for Video Cards. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel where you can find more just like it. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.